Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a review and a demo on the Cogendo Aqua Foundation. So I believe it's pronounced Cogendo, that's the way I say it anyway. I've heard people say it Cogendo, but basically it'll be obviously in the title of the video the way it's spelt, so you can decide however you want to pronounce it and go with that. So this foundation I picked up first of all last November at IMATS in Sydney because I had been hearing a lot of hype about it for quite a while and I just really wanted to try it out and see what the hype was all about. So I bought my first bottle back then. I bought the shade called 143 which is this one here. It is quite dark but there was honestly so many people at the stand and I just was so overwhelmed that I just quickly swatched a shade and was like yep yeah, this will do and this matches my fake tan pretty well um, but I wanted a shade that matched me when I was not so fake tanned so I picked up the shade 113 which is this one here um, just so I had a shade that was lighter and I could mix them together to create like a custom shade and that kind of thing so I do have two shades here and I just want to go through and share with you guys, I guess, the pros and the cons and what I like about this foundation, if it's worth the money and all of that kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my little review. So the packaging that your foundation comes in looks like this. The box is red and black. That's what majority of their products packaging is. It's re this red and black color. On the back it says sheer luminous finish that diffuses the appearance of pores and imperfections. So I would agree with the claims that it is a sheer coverage and a luminous finish. It's definitely sheer to medium coverage I find personally. Um, and it depends on the way you apply it, how much coverage that you can get out of the product. So today I used a buffing brush and I used probably about four and a half pumps. So I used two of the lighter shade, two of the darker shade, and then I did go in with one more pump of the lighter shade just on my forehead. Um, but that's because my skin at the moment does have quite a bit to cover, so I wanted a full coverage look. But definitely when my skin is looking good and there's no blemishes, I can get a really, really beautiful coverage out of it. And it just glows and looks absolutely beautiful. It's very very luminous so I probably wouldn't recommend it for anyone with oily skin to be honest. I personally love this foundation for when my skin's going through a really dry phase so if I've got dry patches I'll always reach for this one because it just gives my skin the moisture that it needs and I guess that's where the aqua foundation claim comes from. In Australia it's available online I don't know where you could get this from that's not online which is a real shame because you have to guess your color match online which personally I'm quite good at but I know a lot of people aren't confident in guessing their color online so you can buy it from Sephora I've just got my computer down here so you can buy it from Sephora and it retails for 91 Australian dollars which is absolutely crazy expensive for a standard 30 mil foundation that is absolutely insane and it's actually all out of stock in every single shade on Sephora right now so wouldn't really recommend going over there but a website that I do absolutely love is PM Studio and they were actually at IMATS and that is the stand that I bought my foundation from. I love PM Studio, they sell like luxury brands that you can easily get your hands on and off there they have it retailing for $68 which is I, like, why does Sephora have it so much more expensive? I have no idea. No idea. So, if you're wanting to get your hands on it, I would probably recommend going to PM Studio to purchase it. Just because all the shades are actually in stock and it is a lot cheaper. So, off the website, it actually says it's made with minerals from the deep waters of Brit Bretag, Bretang, or Bretagne. I am not sure what that word is. Um, and botanical emollients and extracts. Add skin color control factor to reproduce radiance to the skin. Integrated with high performance conditioning ingredients and supplement a self moisturizing property for long flawless wear. So it is a very like nourishing and enriching foundation and it does obviously have skincare ingredients in it. I don't personally wear this foundation every single day so I wouldn't notice any skincare benefits that it's given me. Um, I just wear it every now and then because it is so expensive and 
I wear it mainly when my skin is dry and I just want it to feel like extra hydrated and just taken care of I guess. So my favourite way to apply this foundation I would have to say is with a beauty sponge, so a beauty blender, a Real Technique sponge or I have recently picked up the Exo Beauty Flawless Face Sponge I think this is called. Um, so any sponge that you wet and pounce on the skin, I really, really like the way that applies this foundation. And I actually do find that that gives me the best coverage, to be honest. So today I used a buffing brush. I used this Wet n Wild Faves Buffer Brush, which I do like this brush. It's nothing special, but it is also $6, so um, it's good for the money. But I find I don't actually get as much coverage and, you know, the desired effect that I want when applying the foundation. So I definitely prefer a sponge application with this foundation. And you will see in the clip of me applying the foundation how it looks after it's applied. And obviously I do have it on right now. And it just looks absolutely flawless to be completely honest. I did build it up to be quite a medium coverage. And then I used my Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer, which is again a full coverage concealer. When I look at the skin, it just looks absolutely beautiful. You can't see any pores. Um, it just, yeah, it looks luminous. I obviously have highlighter on, but it still just has a really beautiful glowing look to it. So I guess if you're someone who has dry skin and not a lot to cover kind of thing, and you lack a light to medium coverage. Um, although in saying that, I'm a full coverage kind of foundation person and I find it absolutely beautiful because I just build it up and add concealer. But if you're someone who really wants your skin to feel like it's getting the best possible treatment while you're wearing it, I feel like you would love this foundation. And if you're someone with oily skin or blemish prone skin, acne prone skin, anything like that, I probably really would not recommend this foundation. I feel like it's not enough coverage to cover blemishes and I also feel like if you had texture on the skin it would really enhance that and I feel like you'd have to use a lot of product to get it to really cover the texture and get it to look even. So I guess that's who I would sort of recommend it for. A con of this product is definitely the price point. I find it so ridiculously expensive. Um, but would I repurchase it? Yes, I would. I obviously have already purchased a second bottle of a lighter colour because I do really like the foundation. I guess it really just depends on your skin type and your personal preference when it comes to foundations. But I would definitely, definitely repurchase this one and I am someone who does love a high-end foundation. They are probably my favorite things to buy, to be honest. I love, love, love high-end foundations. Another con of this product is that it only comes in seven different shades and it does not cater for very dark skin tones. So the shade I have that's in 143, which is the darker shade I have, that is one of their darkest shades and I am not a dark person at all. I'm very fair and even with self tanner on, I'm still not dark. Um, I mean, I'm tanned up tanner, but I'm not of a deep complexion at all. So that's another really big con. I feel like they really, really should work on their color range. And another point I will mention is that it's not an extremely long lasting foundation. Um, I find if I apply a good coverage, um, and a good concealer. I do need to set it in place and I always use a setting spray and that's the way that I find it lasts the longest but it's still not as long wearing as some of my more long wearing foundations for example like my NARS She Glow foundation or even like my Maybelline Matte and Poreless foundation I don't find it lasts as long as those ones and I think that is due to how glowy and dewy it is so that is another point to keep in mind. It's probably a foundation that you'd really want to just wear, um, I guess, for special occasions. I am actually not 100% sure if this has flashback, so I'm going to take a flash test and insert it now for you. So it doesn't really seem to have any flashback really. Um, I do have a little bit down the center of my face, but that could be from my um, concealer products and that kind of thing that I use. 
Um, so from what I can see it doesn't have any flashback and it also doesn't seem to have any SPF in it so it shouldn't have any flashback. But yeah, I guess that's all that I really wanted to touch on with this foundation. Um, I do personally really like it. I do like it for specific times, like I mentioned. I like it when my skin's dry, when it feels like it needs a bit more extra TLC and just that kind of thing. Whereas when I need a really long wearing longevity foundation, it's not the one that I go for. So I really hope this video was helpful for you guys. Please, if you have any questions at all, please leave them down below in case I forgot to touch on anything. Um, I can't really think of anything else at the moment. But I do hope this video helped some of you and it was enjoyable to watch, I guess. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Most of their... <sighs> My teeth really hurt.